So as people age, one of the first things that goes is the upper part of your head and your eyes. People usually don't talk about this so much. You think about plastic surgeons, the aging face, you think about facelifts. You know, well, this is generally the end of the road is a facelift. The beginning of the road is your forehead, your brow, and your eyes. So patients in their 30s need to start thinking about Botox, how to keep those wrinkles from forming on their forehead, how to keep the 11 lines from happening between their, between their eyebrows. As you get to 40 and a little bit older, your brows start dropping, which you can see in mine. So that is a procedure that you think about in your 40s through your 50s, uh, you know, 50 year olds. This is a great procedure. When people think about brow lifting, they think about that surprise look. You know, oh my God, I don't want to look like this, where I look like I just got scared by somebody. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, what we do at Jefferson, what we're big fans of, is what's called the endoscopic brow lift. And this is done through small incisions. We use videos and endoscopes, video cameras and endoscopes, uh, to visualize through small incisions in your scalp to separate and lift up your brows. Your brows are the hairs you know, above your eyelids. So lifting those up really can open up your eyes, make you look less tired, make you look less angry, and it's a great procedure. Um, I personally think this is a very underutilized procedure and something that people don't come to me enough for. Uh, usually people will come to the office and say, I look tired, I have saggy skin on my eyes, what do I need done? 90% of the time, the answer to that question is a brow lift. So if you are unsure about uh, why you look angry, why you look tired, uh, take a look. Take a look at the pictures. I bet you your brows have fallen and that you'd be a, a good candidate for a brow lift. As far as the upper eyes go, they do go hand in hand with the brow. So the brow does, and the position of the brow does dictate how much skin is redundant on your upper eyelid. Um, like I said before, a lot of patients come in and say, I just need a little bit of skin here taken off. A lot of times the brow's too low. If you take the a little bit of skin that's too much off the upper eyelid, it'll tend to bring that brow down to the corner of your upper eyelid. Next thing you know, your brow is touching your upper eyelid. You can't have that. So endoscopic brow lift, upper eyelid blepharoplasty is a surgical procedure that is great in younger patients. It gives you a refreshed look. It gives you a non-surgical look. So patient people will not know that you've had surgery done. You will not have a surprised look. Uh, you look better and people won't know why. Blepharoplasty is a great operation to open up your eyes and make you look more uh, refreshed, uh, look better, look younger. As we age, we get excess skin that, that bunches up in places. This happens in the upper eyelids. This happens in the lower eyelids. There are certain structures that keep the fat that is around your eye into your orbital cavity. Uh, these weaken over time and the fat protrudes. That's what you see when people um, you know, talk about the fat bags under the eyes. What the fat bags are under the eyes is fat. It's fat protruding from around your eyeball that's protruding through a structure that used to be strong when you were young and now is weak. Um, so things that we do to correct these type of problems, uh, surgically the uh, correction is what's called a blepharoplasty or upper eyelid surgery. The upper eyelid generally we remove excess skin and or fat depending on what you need. Uh, my personal opinion is that fat of the upper eyelid in this day and age is actually good. So we are very careful not to remove too much fat from the upper eyelid and give you a hollowed out look. I personally think that's the uh, look that makes people look old. You don't want that. As far as the lower eyelid goes, the most common thing is removing fat and tightening up the skin of the lower eyelids. I offer a procedure of the lower eyelid that has no incisions on the outside. We remove the fat through the inside of your eye so you'll never see an incision and then we resurface the skin of the lower eyelid to tighten that up. Uh, my personal preference is using a carbon dioxide laser, though we uh, can use chemical peels. Both uh, things work very well to remove the uh, fine wrinkling and excess skin of the lower eyelids. Good candidates for blepharoplasty uh, would be people that have no history of eye disease, that don't have a history of dry eye, and that have good reasonable expectations uh, for the results that can be achieved from blepharoplasty surgery. What you can expect after blepharoplasty surgery is about a seven to, eight, seven to 10 day downtime period. Uh, I do place sutures in the upper eyelids that need to come out. These come out at about seven days, and you will stay bruised for about seven to 10 days after the surgery. You'll feel good, maybe you need a day or two of pain medicine, uh, but you don't wanna do any dinner parties or any social engagement for probably about two weeks after blepharoplasty surgery.